Hello everyone, welcome to this particular video. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing about for loops inside Python. So in our previous video, we have already discussed about while loop and I told you uh, inside Python, we are having two kinds of loop like while loop and for loop. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing about this particular for loop. We'll try to understand this particular for loop with some example uh, so that yeah, this particular concept would be more clear in your mind. So let's get started with this particular for loop. So here I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it as 16 for loop dot ip y and b so here first of all let's select the kernel so i'll select this base kernel see guys for loop is nothing but again it's a loop uh the way actually while loop works for the let's say uh, repetitive task uh, it will run that particular task continue uh, i mean repetitively so same thing uh, also does this particular for loop okay but uh, syntax wise uh, they are different let me tell you the for loop syntax how we can write this particular for loop syntax so see guys this particular for loop is completely different from other programming language for loop okay so if you remember in c and c++ uh, or java programming we used to define the for loop in a different way but okay but here uh, this particular for loop syntax is uh, completely different and it's like very easy to write this particular for loop and this particular for loop is so powerful it can work with uh, uh, so many data type okay it can work with so many data type i'll tell you uh, how, why it is so powerful okay one by one i will give you some of the example then this part will be more clear so if you want to define a for loop so you can write this particular for keyword and here you can mention i in range and inside that you can give any kinds of number let's say i want to generate uh, one to 10 okay i will give this particular 1 to 11 because because i told you in programming actually your last number would be excluded so that's why you have to take one extra number i think in for loop also i uh, explain this particular concept right so this is the syntax of for loop guys okay so here you can see this for loop uses one range function okay to generate this particular number to generate this particular index and that particular index will store inside this particular i variable so, so this particular variable name can be anything it can be i it can be j it can be k or any kinds of name you can define but but here i'm using i you can use any kinds of uh, name in convention here okay it doesn't matter see if i print this particular i if i print this particular i now if i execute this particular program you'll see that this particular program will generate number 1 to 10 you can see uh, because in the range function i have defined 1 to 11 it will generate the number 1 to 10 range function you will try to generate a number this particular range function will try to generate a number 1 to 10 1 till 10 the range actually you are giving if you are giving 11 it will generate till 10 okay if you are giving 12 it will generate till 11 see okay last number would be excluded always just always try to remember in programming okay in python last number would be always excluded so it will generate till 10 if you are giving 11 okay so what is the use of this particular range function range function will generate this particular index number okay so this thing actually but in while loop we used to create this particular index separately okay we used to create this particular index separately i think remember we used to make a counter uh, after every loop we used to update that particular number but here we don't need to use that particular approach we can directly take this particular index with the help of this particular range function that is what is happening see just try to consider instead of range it is utilizing like that one two three four uh five six seven eight nine ten okay like that like that that means whenever you are running this particular for loop it is first of all picking one it is coming inside i it is printing then two coming inside i it is printing then three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on so this is the work of range function so range function is generating this particular index and i'm able to print this particular index okay i hope this part is clear and this is the syntax of for loop okay this is the syntax of for loop and this is like very easy to define this particular for loop and this particular for loop is so powerful because it has this particular range function and it can work with any kinds of data type now you can ask me what kinds of data type i can work with you can work with any kinds of data let's let, let me give you an example let's say if i write one for loop so for i in okay for i in let's say my name bappi okay now if i just do print i now again if i execute see so see it will iterate my name one by one first of all it will take the b inside i it will print then a then p then p then y so see previously i was working with integer data now i'm working with string type data okay now i'm working with string type data you can also work with any other type data let me show you let's say you, you want to work with uh list type data list i haven't taught you yet i will uh, teach you this particular list as well what is this list as of now try to consider this is a list okay now see if i print it can also iterate through the list it can also iterate through tuple okay it can also iterate through tuple so this is called tuple i'll also uh, teach you this particular tuple concept everything i'll teach you see with any kinds of data 
uh, data type this particular for loop can work okay so one thing i want to show you of this particular range function see uh, this particular range function can take three uh, input so the first one is the lower range the second one is the higher range and the last one is the step value let's say step value is two now what will happen um it will print the number after two step let me show you see first of all it will print one then it will ex uh, it will exclude two then it will print three then it will uh, ignore four it will print five then it will ignore six then seven and nine okay so this particular uh, parameter is a step parameter now see if it if it is three it will ex uh, exclude two number actually see one then four then seven then ten so you can play with this particular parameter so if you need anything in future in your project let's say you want to uh, you want to uh, print the number uh, by let's say excluding one or two number what you can do you can use this particular parameter at that time in the range function so this is the concept of for loop i think uh, you got it see if you have understand about while loop i think uh, this particular loop is also clear like both of them are loop only so whenever i need the repetitive task i can use any of the loop okay it's up to you see the program actually we have written uh, previously uh, i used to print my name uh, 10 times okay with the help of for loop also you can print let's say for uh, for i in so for this i'll just write for i in range okay i want to print my number 10 time okay so what i'll do i'll give 1 to 11 and inside that i'm going to print my name okay i'm going to print my name Bappi. now see it will print my name 10 time okay so the same task we can perform with the help of for loop with the help of while loop yeah so this is the looping concept uh inside python and this particular loop is called for loop now let me do one exercise uh this particular exercise will give you a more clear cut idea about this particular for loop like how it can uh how we can use with different different tasks right so guys you can see this is the uh, exercise we will be solving so here what we have to do we have to write a program so the current population of a town let's say there is a town the current population of that town is uh, 10,000 and the population of the town is increasing at the rate of 10 percent per year you have to write a program to find out the population at the end of the each of the last 10 years okay that means in last 10 years what was the population okay what was the population in that particular town so for this actually i have to write a program so for this what you can do uh, you can use this particular for loop concept let me tell you how we can write this particular program so first of all let me just write the current population so current population is equal to 10,000 okay 10,000 you can see this is the current population of this particular town so here first of all what I have to do I have to I have to go back like 10 year okay I have to go back 10 year let's say let's say if it is let's say 2024 okay if it is 2000 if it is 2000 let's say 24 what i have to do i have to go back 10 year back so i need to check the population of 2023 then 2022 2021 and so on okay and so on i have to get back 10 year back okay so that's how actually i have to figure out this particular population so how we can do it so with the help of uh, for loop i can easily do it so what i will do i'll just write for i in range okay for i in range and i think you remember we can generate a number see we can generate a number like that also let me show you another example let's say this is the for loop we have done right so here yeah, you can see this is the for loop we have done see we can also print the number uh, opposite so here we have printed 1 to 10 okay 1 to 10 we can also print the number uh, let's say 10 to 1 let's say 10 to 1 so for this i need to give 11 and here i have to give 1 and here i have to uh, here i have to mention i need to print the number okay i have to i need to pin the number opposite okay that's it that means minus one now if i execute this particular program you'll see that uh first of all 11 uh 10 9 so here i have to give the 10 and here i have to give the zero that means uh zero would be exclu uh, excluded and it will print till one see so that means 10 9 8 7 6 5 3 2 1 okay and i'm printing the number opposite okay that's how actually you can also use this particular range function so we'll be using this particular concept here so here i'll just write uh, I need to check 10 to 0 that means 1 uh, that means last 10 years and opposite okay A and here I need to get back opposite that means 10 to 1 okay that's why I've given minus 1 now I'll just print so first of all I will print the number so I'll print the i then I'll print my current population okay current population then I will update this particular current population I'll check then I will check what was the population you can see 10% uh, increasing rate so I'll just try to calculate the current population in that particular year so I'll just write current population 
okay current population is equal to so current population is equal to current population divided by uh 1.1 so this is the formula to calculate the population uh for this particular uh, at the end each of the last 10 years so now if i execute this particular program uh you will see this particular output so this is the uh, i mean the current population and this is the previous year population and uh, this is the previous to previous year population that's how you can see all the population listed down okay so yes sir, that's how actually we can use this particular for loop um, with any kinds of problem statement and going forward we'll be doing uh, so many projects and so many uh hands-on okay on top of it and this particular things would be more clear some of the concepts are still left inside for loop like the nested for loop then uh, uh, we'll be also learning about like break continuous statement so in the next video actually we'll be discussing this part so with that guys thank you so much guys for watching this particular video and i will see you next time